This is Germany, a nation known for its efficiency. From a highly productive automotive industry to cities where people would never cross a street before the light turns green, Germans like to do things with precision and order. You'd be forgiven then for assuming the railways here run like clockwork, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Decades of underfunding and neglect have led to outdated and overloaded infrastructure, resulting in frequent delays and cancellations. Despite having more than 1,500 kilometers of high-speed lines, trains are held a red signal far too often, and other countries are starting to take notice. But now, Germany is embarking on its biggest rail overhaul in decades, and investing billions into its troubled network. This is how it plans to pull off one of the largest upgrades of its kind in Europe, all while battling to complete a pair of mega projects that it's been trying to finish for years. In September 2023, Germany's Minister for Transport, Volker Wissing, made a huge announcement. He was launching the largest infrastructure program of its kind since the German rail reform in 1994, three years after reunification. Why? Well, because since then, activity on the country's railways has grown significantly. Between 1994 and 2022, passenger volume increased 46%, and the share of people travelling by train compared to other modes of transport went up from 6.7% to 9.3%. Today, the system operated by the state-owned Deutsche Bahn handles almost 100 billion passenger kilometers every year. But this rise in demand has led to some big problems. More travelers has meant more trains going out on a network that's actually smaller than it was three decades ago. As Deutsche Bahn admitted in early 2024, the infrastructure cannot cope with the constantly growing volume of rail traffic. The system lacks robustness, resilience and capacity reserves. Considerable quality deficits are the results. So just how bad have things got? Well, in 2023, only 64% of long-distance trains arrived on time, the worst figure on record. That same year, Deutsche Bahn had to fork out more than 130 million euros in refunds due to delays. That's a 43% rise in 12 months. And it isn't just Germans that have suffered. During the Euro 2024 football tournament, late and overcrowded trains caused travel chaos for fans and even the teams themselves. So you get the picture. These railways are now in a bit of a sorry state and in need of significant investment. Fortunately, that's just what the country is getting. Wissing and his federal government have decided to inject a staggering 40 billion euros into the country's railways up to 2027. So what's the plan for all that money? Which areas are of the greatest concern? And perhaps most importantly, why hasn't Germany done anything about it until now? Well, that's not entirely true. Back in 1972, when it hosted the Summer Olympics, Munich unveiled one of the biggest public transport systems in Germany, the S-Bahn. Now, if you're not familiar with the German railways, S-Bahns connect a city centre to suburban areas going over and above ground. U-Bahns operate solely within the confines of a city and mostly underground. Anyway, this S-Bahn was designed to transport 240,000 people every day when it first opened. More than 50 years later, around 850,000 people now use it. That's almost four times as many people in half a century. Although there are eight different lines of the Munich S-Bahn branching out across the region, when trains get to the city centre, they all have to pass through a single main line. Not only has this tunnel hit capacity, it's also now a major bottleneck. And if something goes wrong on this line, there's no alternative route. So how is Deutsche Bahn addressing the issue? What do you do when you've got a single rail line running through a city that's become chronically overcrowded? Well, you build a new one. And yes, a second main line is now under construction to ease pressure on the system, cut travel times, and ensure the S-Bahn keeps running when problems do occur. Approximately 10 kilometers in length, it'll go from Lyme, west of the city center, to Leuchtenberg Ring in the east. And there's already been a lot of construction happening. That there is the Western Tunnel Portal, where trains will pass under the existing tracks on their way to the centre. Since the summer of 2024, the outlines of the future tunnels that will be excavated with TBMs have been clearly visible, ready for the machines to start digging. After entering the portal, trains will soon arrive at the main station, which is being completely redeveloped. Platforms for the new routes will slot in beneath the existing levels 41 metres below ground. 
A new reception building is in the works too and will go where the old ticket hall once stood. That was demolished back in 2019 through a process that took around two weeks. Now, to construct the new underground station, a large excavation pit had to be opened up on the site. That allowed materials and machines to pass in and out as the subterranean levels were gradually carved out and concreted. That same method is being carried out at the next stop on our journey along the route, the Marienhof. Under construction right next to the cathedral and Munich's central square, it's an entirely new station that'll be covered in green space when it's completed. Due to the U-Bahn getting in the way, and to avoid disruption to those historic surrounding buildings, the platforms are going to go at a similar depth to the main station. Now, when planning a major project like this, where a variety of different structures are being delivered, insight into building performance and sustainability is becoming essential. Architects and designers aren't just having to create buildings that consume less energy, they also need to comply with environmental standards while keeping operational costs low. And that's a lot of things to get right. But with Enscape Impact, a brand new add-on for Enscape that's also compatible with most BIM platforms, project teams are now able to make better, data-informed decisions. Enscape Impact provides accurate, immediate and actionable insights on a building's energy consumption, emissions and other criteria without having to switch between separate tools. By integrating Enscape's real-time rendering with fast key performance analytics, users can spot-check key metrics as the structure is being built. This enhances both energy efficiency and aesthetics while cutting out rework. Designs are optimised from the very beginning, while feedback can be shared and obtained instantly. No extensive trainings needed or prior experience with the software, and there are educational tooltips as well, making it accessible to everyone. To find out more about Enscape Impact and how it can help your next project, click on the link in the description or visit enscape3d.com forward slash impact. Now, let's get back to that big German railway and find out how they're building those stations so far underground. Well, before one of those pits we talked about goes in, a diaphragm wall has to be constructed. It forms the outer shell of the station and is built by cutting a series of vertical slits deep into the ground. A special formwork is placed into these, which is filled with concrete, and then the process is repeated around the perimeter. Meanwhile, holes are drilled right across the site for the steel supports to slot into. Next, it's time to dig those pits, enabling excavation to take place under the surface right up to the diaphragm walls. Concrete covers can then be put in at certain levels, which become the various floors of the station. Although work is yet to start on it, the new Ostbahnhof will be built just 16 metres deep, this time above the existing U-Bahn line and beneath the overground tracks. Finally, just beyond this point, trains will resurface before reaching the upgraded Leuchtenberg Ring. This is where the new line connects back up with the original core route. It all sounds very impressive, but unfortunately this project hasn't gone entirely to plan. Having started construction in 2017, it was supposed to finish in 2028, but that's now been pushed back by quite a long way. Completion is now expected to be between 2035 and 2037, with costs currently sitting around 7 billion euros. That figure has risen too. In 2016, it was just under 4 billion euros. Now, there are several reasons for this. Some parts of the project, like the Ostbahnhof, have been through major redesigns since the first plans were submitted. Approvals have taken longer than predicted, there have been disputes over how the project is funded, and a rise in material costs hasn't helped things either. Despite all that, there is a widespread acceptance that this does need to happen and that it will be beneficial in the long run. While the current core route serves around a thousand journeys each weekday, when the second one is eventually operational, that capacity will double to 2,000. Okay, now it's time to move to a city northwest of here that's been experiencing an oddly similar story. A couple of hundred kilometers to the northwest, there's another project that's an immense feat of construction, but has become known more for its setbacks, Stuttgart 21. Its main component is a huge underground through station to replace the old central terminus. Then there's the 56 kilometers of tunnels, more than 40 bridges, and 100 kilometers of new tracks. Now, we're not going to go into loads of detail here because we already did that back in our video from 2021, which covered the story behind it and what's made it so controversial. But we can give a bit of an update. As these pictures from 2024 show, the project has made significant progress. All of the 28 chalice columns that support the ceiling of the main station have now been built, along with the roof itself. And according to Deutsche Bahn, the tunnelling is also complete. 
However, it doesn't mean that everything has suddenly turned rosy with this project. It's now set to cost at least 11 billion euros, and it was recently delayed again to 2026. It's fair to say these city projects haven't exactly been popular with the German public, and the same can be said for the rail network as a whole. But there has been one big development. Another giant scheme now underway has caused more frustration, but is likely to have a much bigger impact. A total of 40 rail corridors across the country, around 4,000 kilometers overall, are being extensively renovated from now until 2030. This is what the bulk of that 40 billion euros is being spent on. The first corridor to be modernized is Riedbahn, a 70 kilometer link between Frankfurt and Mannheim. Over 300 freight and passenger trains come through here every day, making it one of the busiest rail lines in the entire system. Because it regularly hit its maximum capacity, the Riedbahn is another major bottleneck on the network, which is why Deutsche Bahn has made upgrading it a top priority. More than 100 kilometers of track is getting replaced, and overhead lines are being renewed, along with the points all along the line. They're the sections where the trains move between tracks. The numbers are huge. 265,000 new sleepers are going in, as well as 380,000 tons of ballast. There'll also be three new crossovers, creating alternative routes for trains running at the same time. Now, as you can imagine, all of this work taking place on such a key transport route has caused a lot of disruption, especially when it's put the line out of action for nearly half a year. Services have had to be rerouted, adding half an hour to journeys between the two cities. Commuters in other areas can expect more of the same too. The line connecting Hamburg and Berlin, which transports up to 30,000 people every day, will begin its own overhaul in 2025 and is also due to close for several months. After that, the so-called high-performance corridors operating out of Cologne and Nuremberg will get their own turn a year later. Now, we're not going to list all 40, but take a look at this map and you'll see that all the main cities are going to be a part of it. So if you're planning on interrailing around Germany, you might want to bear in mind there could be a lot of disruption in the years ahead. But it's important to look at the end result. The improvements on the Reed Barn are expected to reduce infrastructure-related disruptions by over 80%. A full digitalization of the network is included in the plan, which promises to raise capacity by 30%. It would appear that Germans may at last have some cause for rail optimism and should start to see the effects of this long-awaited strategy in the very near future. With the German rail system at its lowest point in a generation, news of an unprecedented funding boost will have been welcomed by many. However, as we've already seen, spending big doesn't necessarily mean that things will go smoothly. But with those schemes now making progress and a firm plan in place to modernize the entire network, this could be Deutsche Bahn's best shot at redemption. This video is sponsored by Enscape Impact. You can learn more about that at the link below. Don't forget that we're inspiring the next generation of builders through our investment into BrickBorrow, a fantastic LEGO subscription service. You can learn more and get started today over at BrickBorrow.com. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.